पवित्राणाय साधुना विनाशाय दिस इज the first line of the sutra 8 of fourth chapter paritranaay sadhunam vinashay chadushkritam dharma sansthapnarthay sambhavami yuge yuge there is a question in the preceding sutra which is yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bhar whenever there is a decline in righteousness yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bhar abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam srijamya i rise from age to age this is the literal meaning given to this sutra i have spoken on this sutra in the previous talk so the question is in the preceding sutra yada yada hi dharmasya the declaration by krishna had a condition that for the protection of the sage and for the destruction of the wicked i rise from age to age please explain it there are certain things which we need to understand in order to truly understand the essence of this sutra statements of krishna buddha christ and mahavir are no ordinary statements this particular sutra comes in the category of a statement by krishna the statements of buddha christ krishna mahabir are no ordinary statements they are impregnated with celestial fire and requires awakening and understanding to understand these statements first you have to plunge deep within your being and when the lamp is lit only then in your inner incandescence inner light everything gets incandescent and shows the essence the true meaning of these sutras the sutra says paritranaay sadhunam paritranaay means for the protection of the sage vinashaay cha dushkritam for the destruction of the wicked dharma sansthapnarthay for the establishment of righteousness sambhavami yuge yuge i rise from age to age for the protection of the sage and for the destruction of the wicked imply the same thing paritranaay sadhuna protection of the sage vinashaay cha dushkritam vinash means destruction dushkritam means the wicked the, for the destruction of the wicked remember try to emphasize try to understand these words destruction of the wicked protection of the sage these are no ordinary words and cannot be understand cannot be understood in ordinary meaning when the wicked is really destroyed this needs to be understood when the wicked is really destroyed this needs to be understood this requires going deeper into the essence of the sutra almost all the commentators have remained on the surface remember there is a vast difference between a commentary and the insights the difference is like heaven and earth the difference is not quantitative instead it is qualitative can wickedness vanish by destroying the wicked have you ever asked this question can wickedness vanish by destroying the wicked certainly wickedness cannot be destroyed but cannot be destroyed this way 
by destroying the wicked you cannot vanish the wickedness you never looked at the sutra this way by killing or destroying the wicked the wickedness can never vanish wickedness is an inner process that never ceases by killing one because when somebody dies it is the body that disappears and remember wickedness is not done by the body body is simply an instrument first a thought has to come in first emotions has to come in and these are the part of the mind these are the subtle aspects these the emotions the understanding the thoughts they belong to the subtle realm of the mind not the body when a person dies the body disappears but the mind lives on the putrified emotions the thoughts remain on until a new body is assumed the thoughts comes back so by destroying the wicked the wickedness can never destroy without knowing this essence of life how can one go on doing the commentary on the sutras of krishna this lacks understanding you never looked at the sutra this way by killing or destroying the wicked the wickedness can never vanish wickedness is an inner process that never ceases by killing one you kill one wicked next one takes place you destroy one criminal another one comes in that place the moment the head of the criminals dies someone among the group rises to be the commander wickedness is deeply embedded in human unconsciousness wickedness is deeply embedded in human unconsciousness the root is complex and deep by destroying the wicked destroying the wicked is like pruning the tree when you prune the tree for a little while it appears that the tree has disappeared but then no the tree has not disappeared the moment right environment comes there is rainfall once again the tree begins to sprout the branches begin to come by destroying the wicked is like pruning the tree you have to uproot the tree from its roots only then the tree can vanish unless you remove the wickedness from its roots it can never vanish for the protection of the sage and for the destruction of the wicked you cannot destroy the wicked if it was for the destruction of the wickedness it would have been meaningful krishna knows very well that by killing nothing changes only the form changes you kill water kill ice by melting it form changes but water remains itself and the water has tendency to become ice once again and then when the water is put on the heat it evaporates form changes but the water vapors water that has become vapors now has a tendency to change its form back again when it rains to become water again the difference is qualitative not quantitative it may be while ice is melting some of the water may escape 
not all that ice is melting the water will be the same the quantitative difference is meaningless qualitative difference is important when ice melts its form changes but it remains basically the same the energy is not destroyed it's only its form changes so by killings nothing changes only the form changes body will not be visible now and when as long as the body was visible it was easy to bring about the transformation and the moment body disappears it becomes subtle and it becomes very difficult to destroy that as long as i am available in the physical form it is very easy to connect to me you do not have to make an uh, arduous efforts to connect to me but the moment i am not in the physical form you have to you will require tremendous insights and energy to connect to the subtle vibrations of tau shudra or the subtle vibrations of buddha or for that matter any other master the wickedness is no more physical manifestation instead it has reached a subtle level when you kill the wicked the wickedness has reached into the subtlety of it it is no more physical you are not seeing the actions of the persons but the thoughts the emotions are there in the subtlest form which you cannot see you can see ice you can see water up to a certain extent up to a certain extent you can see vapors also but then once they become part of the cosmos you cannot see them once the mind dissolves it becomes part of the cosmic mind all the water that has been evaporating in different places in different parts naturally or otherwise becomes part of the one cosmic realm and then you cannot recognize the water that you had in the pot boiling where does it exist as part of the cosmos it has become cosmic your thoughts your emotions has become the part of the cosmic emotions cosmic and it is very difficult it is very difficult to then to find out where is your portion of emotions as long as your emotions were part of your physical body you can see it you can see the gestures someone can see the gestures that this is the way this particular person gets angry but when the person dies the anger remains anger has not dissolved it becomes part of the totality a part part of the whole the water that was put into your pot and it was boiling as long as it was in the immediate environment you can see the vapors rising from the pot and they disappearing rising up to a certain level you can see but beyond that they disappear and become part of the existence so krishna knows very well by killing someone the wickedness does not disappear the anger does not disappear only form changes body will not be visible anymore and as long as the body is not visible the emotions the thoughts have entered now into a subtler realm and they will not be visible wickedness vanishes only in one condition when it is transformed into righteousness the way is not to destroy the wicked but to transform wickedness the way is not to destroy the wicked instead transform wickedness into righteousness this has been wrongly interpreted for the destruction of the wicked it should be for the transformation of the wickedness 
and the moment wickedness is transformed righteousness is established automatically when your anger dissolves immediately is not that you have to bring back the compassion is not that the moment there is a vacuum you have to come and fill it with something else this is an automatic and spontaneous process there can never remain a vacuum in anything the moment something is finished is emptied immediately it fills with the air so the moment wickedness is transformed and when it is transformed its form changes it becomes compassion anger becomes compassion the water that was fluid like flowing downwards is transformed and is become steam this is the process wickedness vanishes only in one condition when it is transformed into righteousness this requires the process of spiritual transformation krishna is not only a warrior instead he is an enlightened master who understands this and is capable of bringing inner transformation in the wicked krishna is capable of bringing the transformation in the wicked according to hindus when a wicked is thus killed full of awareness attains to salvation when a wicked is killed with such an awareness that this killing is the only way that transformation is possible this body for instance you have a particular post a particular place where birds come and sit the moment the post is removed the birds will not find that post to come and sit there so when the transformation has happened the body that was cause of that negativity is no more there new body will come into existence and with that the transformation has already taken place this new body that comes into place will be a different situation according to hindus when a wicked is thus killed full of awareness attains to salvation this is the way so krishna is through his insights bringing salvation into all those who have attained to wickedness whose energy has begun to move into the wrong direction what happens in the process of transformation you are living a life of unconsciousness you are not aware that you were angry you were full of negativities you were full of negation of life now with the process of transformation all these things begin to change their form then what happens there the angry person in you is no more there instead of that there is an awareness there is an understanding this is the way of transformation so what has happened that you have attained to a state of salvation while living in the body your anger your frustration your all those things which were naturally becoming your negativities are being transformed into something different this is salvation salvation means the way you are is transformed and you become a totally different person this is the way of transformation without inner transformation wickedness cannot vanish this krishna knows the ignorant one will kill the wicked and thus feel certain that with this the seed of wickedness too is destroyed but you remember by pruning the tree the tree does not vanish 
when the right environment comes there is rain the tree brings new foliage you have to destroy it by its roots and roots means first you bring the transformation into the person and when the transformation comes in the body has to vanish because this body has been instrumental in bringing the wickedness in converting your thoughts into your thoughts into negativities when a particular part of your body becomes malignant it can cause poison and the poison may spread that malignancy may spread into the other parts of the body so what it is done there that particular part is also removed and an awareness is brought into you that your way of life your lifestyle has been responsible for growth of this malignancy so an understanding is brought into you and that particular malignant part is also destroyed the two things have to go together simultaneously so krishna knows this the ignorant one will kill the wicked and thus feel certain that with this the seed of wickedness too is destroyed you cut a tree from the stems that does not mean the tree will not grow again you bring the understanding into the person and then remove the malignant part then there is a possibility that will not arise any more the roots are there and the seed too the moment the spring comes the tree will have new foliage and the growth will begin again the seed too will sprout into the right environment to destroy the wicked is easy however to destroy wickedness is an altogether different matter this requires awareness the understanding the awakening of a master this does not require a mighty warrior instead it requires an enlightened master who can destroy the wickedness in you who can destroy the negative tendencies in you so that you attain to salvation and you are resurrected interestingly he made another significant statement in the sutra for the protection of the sage this requires meditative insights for the protection of the sage does sage really need a protection does an enlightened one really needs a pro- protection only the ignorant one needs protection the enlightened one why does he not need protection enlightenment means he has gone beyond life and death you want to save life and are afraid of death when you are afraid of death that somebody may kill you you need protection you need burglar proofs you need security but when you are not afraid of death why would you need the protection and said is the one who has attained the state beyond life and death he has experienced the death and he knows that it is the body that disappears the consciousness does not this is an important significant statement for the protection of the sage this requires meditative insight not the surface you too have to understand first you have to understand first what is who is a sage is he one in a particular garb saffron ro or white ro or change the name or is inducted or ordained into an institution or has certain mannerism is he sage as happens in many traditions where a particular sainthood is bestowed upon you you are ordained in christianity it happens 
he is ordained as a saint. Then he carries the name of saint. In many Hindu traditions, it is someone who bestowed the, the ordains you as Swami. Not that you are you have assumed that awareness out of your own growth. This is the way we see the sage around us, Mashroom. Is he really a sage? Krishna is speaking of the inner quality of the sage. Sage is the one who is beyond finiteness of the body-mind realm. Sage is the one in whom existence has descended. Inner lamp is lit. He lives by his inner light. Inner has blossomed into myriad flowers and now its beauty and fragrance assumes the form of words and gestures in the outer realm. In him greed, vanity, lust, ego, anger, jealousy, ignorance are all transformed into compassion. The wicked, the energy is transformed. It is no more flowing downward. In such a being there is no outer symptom. He is like a woman who protects her virginity from any contamination or damage. He is like a woman who protects the virginity from any contamination and or damage. It is in the profits of his public vices that he nourishes his private virtues. It is in the profit of his public vices that he nourishes his private virtues. Unless you have experienced something within yourself, you will not be able to recognize him. Who can assess your or give you marks in your examination. One who is like you or one who is at the same level or who has gone beyond your level. Your instructor has gone beyond your level. He is now capable of assessing your work. A master is the one who has gone beyond the level of unconsciousness. He has entered the realm of consciousness. He dwells there permanently. He is like a woman who protects her virginity from any contamination and damage. Unless you have experienced something within yourself, you will not be able to recognize him. Such an enlightened one lives by his inner light. The question comes, does such a being need protection? Certainly. Certainly Krishna is not speaking of such a sage. Because he does not need protection. He has experienced death within his body, within his life. He is beyond death and birth both. He knows that these are simply the change of form. Death cannot take away all that he is. The form changes. A Buddha needs no protection. He has no will of his own. Thy will is his will. Then how can he need protection? If someone comes to kill him, then he will consider as his die, as thy will. Was Jesus afraid? Jesus as a man was afraid, but Christ was not afraid. And he says, and in order to show the difference between the two, Jesus, as a human being, the son of Mary and Joseph, complains. But he has come to show the other way. He has come to show the way of Buddhas. Let thy will prevail is the statement of a Christ. A resurrected, a transformed one. Indian national poet Hazari Prasad Dwedi has encompassed a, a conversation 
between Buddha and his disciple Purun Kashyap. Purun attained to enlightenment and he comes to pay his gratitude to Buddha, who is sitting in his usual posture with eyes half open and half closed. Purun explains his inner state of bliss that is overflowing. Buddhas to Buddha. Buddha listens to him with his eyes half closed, half open, sitting in the lotus posture with one foot hanging. Buddha, while spreading the message, if people do not listen, then what will you do? Buddha asks a question to Purun. While spreading the message, if people do not listen, then what will you do? Every morning during the meditation, everyone has to come. I wait. Whoever comes, it begins. Whoever has not come, that is it. While spreading the message, if people do not listen, then what would you do? Purun replies, I will consider them to be grippled by ignorance or indolence. And ignorance can only be dispelled by light and awareness. And ignorance can only be dispelled by light and awareness. I will consider them to be gripped by ignorance. And what is ignorance? Is the absence of light, absence of awareness. And ignorance can only be dispelled by light and awareness. Buddha again asks, if these ignorant one abuse you, what can abuse do to one? Purun replies. What can abuse do to one? It cannot harm physically. And one who is empty within, abuse cannot create any scar on his innerness. Such a person needs compassion instead. When an adult person says something to you unpleasant, says that you are looking so ugly, you get angry. When a little child says, Auntie, you're looking a little ugly. Oh, really? Tell me what I what is looking so ugly in me? You say you know the makeup that you did. It is not matching with your face. All right, I go and change it. I will change it. But when an adult says, what happens to you? You think I looking ugly? Watch at yourself. You are looking ugly. Not me. But the man of awareness, what can abuse do to me? It cannot leave a scar on his innerness. Such a person needs compassion instead. Buddha continues, Is still the ignorant one does not understand and stone you? A stone can hurt the outer, Purun replied. A stone can hurt the outer, the physical, but cannot damage the inner serenity and bliss. If someone hurls a stone at you, it can only get a little bruise or damage or a fracture, but it cannot damage the inner serenity and bliss of a Buddha. When the stone, a big stone, was hurled at Buddha. He was there was no anger in him. Instead, there was compassion against the person who has done this act. Then Buddha continues still. Suppose they are still not satisfied with the stoning and kill you then. This is the last. You cannot do anything more than that to the body. You abuse first. First you did not listen. Next you abuse the person. When abuse did not do anything, then you stone. 
when you stone what else can you do you can simply kill but once you kill the person what else can you do what is the extreme of it there is nothing buddha says suppose they are still not satisfied with the stoning and they kill you then poon replies let thy will prevail and is spreading the light that too is accepted as thy will if i am there is spreading the message of buddhas and i am killed when somebody when somebody is killed on the war front he is not considered as killed he says it is said that he has become a martyr he has sacrificed himself at the altar of the nation we do not call these people as dead martin luther king we do not call him junior martin luther king we do not call him as died he has become a martyr sacrifices them it is said the moment purn said let thy will prevail and is spreading the light spreading thy light that to is accepted as even death is accepted as thy will it is said buddha opened his eyes that were half closed and half open purn and blessed purn saying now you have it you can share only that which you have purn was sent by buddha in the remotest area of bihar called sukha sukha actually means dried it is a criminal area to spread the message of buddha that is how buddha was sent. but if you are simply acting you will forget you will simply forget i have heard during the moment during the time of the hindu festival in the month of october when the acts of ram and sita are played it is known as ram leela the acts of ram so it happened that there is a act particular act when hanuman flies over to reach lanka the place where sita was captured and was kept in captivity so now what has to be done the person cannot fly he is simply acting so it happened that the he was holding on to a rope and trying to act as flying suddenly it happened by mistake or other the rope was cut off so hanuman fell on the ground the person who was acting the part of ram he said son you reach already the part the hanuman actor was completely forgot that he was acting he said forget about all that whether i come or not tell me for su cut the rope it also happened i have heard that the person who was acting as ravan he had liked a particular girl who was acting as sita but then sita was supposed to be ram's wife but it was reversed the person forgot that he is the villain so if you are acting and the change has not taken place within then you may forget while acting it and if it is a transformation has taken place within then there will not be an acting this is what krishna means by sage such a person does not need protection only the one who is simply acting who is a fake faking as a sage he needs protection he thinks that everyone should protect me
Such is the innerness or the quality of the sage that Krishna is referring to. That the quality that Purna has manifested, has exhibited, Krishna is referring to that innerness as the quality of the sage. I am re reminded of another incident from the life of Swami Vivekananda. He was encouraged by the Maharaja of another state in India, Khetri, to go to America to attend the Parliament of Religions. Vivekananda hesitated at first and then when the king insisted he needed the permission from his master who was no more physically alive. He mentioned of this to Maharaja and said that he has to go to seek permission from the Holy Mother Sharda before he can make any commitment. Vivekananda reached Kolkata to visit the Holy Mother. Seeing Vivekananda after such a long time, she became elated. She started inquiring all about his welfare as she sat him near her in the kitchen. She kept on, kept him so engrossed in her loving talks that Vivekanand forgot all about the permission that he has come for. Ma told him that she will prepare his favorite rice dish as meals. While Vivekanand and Ma were in the kitchen, suddenly she asked Vivekanand to hand her the kitchen knife that lay near him. Vivekanand, now knife has two parts, the blade and the wooden handle. Vivekanand held the knife with the blade and facing the wooden handle towards the Holy Mother, gestured to give the knife to her. Very simple act. Normally, an ignorant one will held on to the knife with the wooden handle and point the blade towards the other. And if the person is not cautious in holding on to the knife, he may damage. The sharp edge may damage. The Holy Mother looked at Vivekanand compassionately and said, Now you have, you can go and attend the Parliament of Religions. She knew what Viveka, Vivekanand has come for. She immediately gives him the permission. Thus mysteriously the Holy Mother gave Vivekanand the permission for which he has come but forgot to ask. He had come to seek the permission to go to America but he has forgotten completely and mysteriously Holy Mother gave him the permission. Such is the inner state of the sage or the enlightened one or the master that Krishna is speaking of. Blade is symbolic of point. It is pointed. Consciousness is double arrowed blade. The one faces towards the other. I am speaking to you. Definitely my focus is on to you. Because I am speaking to you, I have to use the language that will be easily understood by you. If I start speaking the Hindi language or Sanskrit or any other language which is not accessible to you, you will not understand the message. Because the inner beauty assumes the form of words that are easily understood, but at the same time, where these words are coming, these are words are emanating from the deepest core of my being. Where there is no word, there is only silence, there is only serenity, there is only light, there is only blissfulness. So if I am not aware of my innerness, I become oblivious of that, then I have lost focus on me, as happens in case of all the public orators, they forget themselves and they are only aware of the presence of the crowd. So it cannot be transformed. 
why does transformation takes place you can copy these words the script is there you can recite these words but the effect will not be as much as it would be when i am speaking because i am that the speaking becomes a bridge between my innerness and your innerness through these words my innerness is being communicated to you my blissfulness my silence my light is being communicated to you if the focus is lost on either of the two it will not happen it will not be communion communion means when the bridge is established between the two innerness from my innerness the words the inner beauty the light is assuming the form of words and reaching there it is like i am speaking my voice is analog it is immediately converted through my speaking device into a digital energy and it is the digital that trans that travels analog does not travel it is it travels in the form of energy and when it reaches your telephone or receiver that is immediately trans converts the digital into analog you can only hear the analog not the digital i can only speak analog but then there has to be a device that converts analog into digital your telephone you are speaking but if you do not speak in your speaker phone the the analog will not be converted into digital and if you do not keep your ears on your device system suppose your computer system your skype uh, is down the my analog is being converted into digital but there is no device in you to transform that digital into analog once again you will not be able to hear these words so is the case with the images video images so what is very important the focus has to be on the two i have to have the focus on my digital advice my uh, my device that i am speaking into that and at the same time i am seeing that you are on the screen there is no you are there and the moment these two are established a communion is established a bridge happens between the two so the for my focus is on two things number one my innerness and your presence and through your presence on your innerness and then through your gestures i can see the effect that is creating on your innerness these words that is hitting your innerness creating an a kind uh, a heat within so that all the negativities which were flowing downwards begin to evaporate and become the part of the entire cosmos first it becomes the part of your inner cosmos then it becomes merges with the outer that inner and outer are merged through you this is the way the transformation can happen mysteriously the holy mother gave vivekanand permission for which he has come and forgot to ask such is the inner state of the sage or the enlightened one or a master that krishna is speaking of and definitely he needs no protection because he is beyond life and death he has experienced deathlessness that experience that which is never born never dies there is something in you that never born never dies were you a different person when you were a child your innerness your being is the same when you were a child when you close your eyes there is no age the age is only of the outer age is only of the body this is why it is said sometimes when people are older they still play young because their innerness 
is beyond time and death. It is eternal. Never born, never dies. And when you experience that, you know there is no birth, there is no death. It is simply a, a play. That is what Hindus call is Leela. This is simply an act. I know that you are enlightened within, but there are many things on that covered. That is covering your light. There is so much of layers around you. So through this, the moment the layers are removed, the light begins to shine. And as the process of transformation continues, more and more these outer coverings are removed and the inner light begins to shine through your gestures, through your behaviors, through your life, through your words, through your relation in your surroundings. Such is the inner state of an enlightened one or the master that Krishna is speaking of. And definitely he needs no protection. His awareness, inner light is sufficient unto itself. What was so peculiar in this incident that I mentioned? No scholar or your so-called priest speaks like this. Such is the device of the master. Remember the knife has two edges, the sharp metal blade that is used to cut the vegetables, to cut the vegetables, to make it usable, to cut your ignorance, make it usable. Certainly this side can harm as well if not used carefully. And the other side is the wooden handle. Vivekananda in a flash realized this device. He held the knife with the metal blade because he is holding, so he is careful how he is holding. And face the wooden handle towards the Holy Mother. This is significant. A master used a device and disciple understood and executed with awareness. The Holy Mother used the device to see if the inner change has taken place in him or he is simply acting. And the moment Vivekanand, the disciple, understood and executed it with awareness, so too your consciousness is double arrowed. And when Buddha asked, Buddha used a device for Purnakasya to check him whether the growth that is enlightenment is a real process or it is fake. Is he a really a sage or a fake one simply acting? The moment and it if there is a if you are really pregnant, the tests will show that you are pregnant. But if you are acting, you can fool everyone, but you cannot fool the wise one. You cannot fool the doctor, the gynecologist that you are not that you are pregnant. If you are really pregnant, the gynecologist, the expert, the master will know that you are pregnant. But if you are not, he will simply smile at you and say, no, you are not. Because he knows the inner mechanism, what happens when a person is pregnant. A master knows when a change has taken place within an individual, how should he act? Bhagavad Gita gives many instances how when Arjun asks question how would an enlightened one act? He gives the indications of that. This is significant. The master used the device and the disciple understood and executed with awareness. So too your consciousness is double arrowed. So too your consciousness is double arrowed. One side must face the other to whom it is directed and the next side must face you. You are aware that the words are emanating from the deepest core of your being, not from the mind, not from the surface. The innerness, it is the analog. 
which is becoming digital and through that this is the device of communication the telephone communication my analog is being converted by my system into digital and reaches through the through the internet device to your system and then immediately the digital is converted into analog which you listen and there is no time gap thus mystical connection is established between master and disciple normally when someone speaks the focus is on the listener and the speaker loses contact with his being the bridge is not established and without the bridge there is no communion and transformation is not possible satsang means when the bridge is created between the master and the disciple master is aware of his innerness and the aware of the innerness of the disciple and what has to be done in the disciple this bridge is communion and the essence of satsang only when such communion or bridge is established then the master can bring about transformation in the seeker through his awareness through his light through his understanding of course krishna cannot understand a sage in any other way then the question arises then the question arises why is he saying for the protection of the sage then the question comes why is he saying for the protection of the sage and protection from who protection from whom you need the protection for the protection of the sage protection of who and from whom sage is capable of protecting him a sage is capable of protecting him and this krishna knows very well sages need no protection from the wicked or anyone else his life by the cosmic law he lives by the divine law or the cosmic law or divine will and when one is living by divine will and has experienced the eternal within he is not afraid of even dying you need protection because of death you need protection because you are afraid that someone may take away your car someone can take away your possessions someone may take away your boyfriend or girlfriend you are afraid you need protection you may still think that krishna is seeking the protection of the sage this is the surface meaning to explore the gem that lies hidden within the womb of the ocean you cannot remain on the surface instead you have to dive deep within the ocean and in case to understand the essential or the message of krishna that is deeply embedded in the sutra first you have to explore your innerness and only then the doors of the sutra will unlock for you on the surface on the basis of the literal meaning that you understand english that you can understand the sutras of krishna no you cannot understand that you cannot understand the message of jesus simply on the pretext that you know english you know english but you do not know the ways and means of jesus you do not know the ways and means of krishna by understanding the language it does not give you a assurance that you understand the consciousness of krishna and in case to understand the essential or the message of krishna that is deeply embedded in the sutra first you have to explore your innerness only then the doors of the sutra will unlock for you before that you will simply remain on the surface then what does krishna really imply by the statement for the protection of the sage the day sale sage will be false sainthood will become false because i have to come to establish the order of dharma the day sage will be false sainthood will become false then i have to come to establish the order again 
when the wheel of dham is rotated when the wheel of dham is rotated it continues for 500 years then the momentum slows down when the momentum is slowing down that's where i have to come not to protect the sage or establish righteousness no i have to come to set the wheel once again in motion that whose momentum is slowing down not that he comes for the protection of the sage and you remember in existence nothing is repeated because god is creator not manufacturer always remember god is creator and what does it mean to be a creator and what does it mean to be a manufacturer for manufacturer you have a mold and you put everything into that and a new model comes in and you put a number on it but creator everything is unique every single individual is unique in his own way and there is no carbon copy of that there can never be sainthood will become false when sainthood be will become false that means the wheel of time the wheel of dham is losing its momentum when there is people around a master whosoever comes their way of life begins to change and when this connection is weakened that means the wheel of dham is slowing down or it's losing its momentum then someone has to come after every 500 years the rotation of the wheel needs a new force because its momentum is going down it's just slowing down and after 25 centuries 2500 years the movement the movement ceases completely then process has to be reactivated after every 500 years the it has to once again gain the momentum and after 2500 years it has to be reactivated he implies when these false sages begin to mushroom and the movement of the wheel of dharma accordingly as a result of these false sages false saints who have been mushrooming is slowing down i will come not to protect the sage because sage needs no protection he implies when these false sages begin to mushroom and the movement of the wheel of dharma is slowing down i will return and when he returns what will he do what will be his form will he return as jesus will he return as krishna all the followers of these krishna or jesus are ignorantly waiting for their original preceptor in their original form this is business like otherwise who will recognize jesus if he comes in a different garb and a diff as a different being remember nothing is repeated in existence because god is the creator not the manufacturer each time he creates it is always fresh and new these are never there is never repetition only a manufacturer is repetitive he goes on producing the products on the assembly line he goes on producing the products on the assembly line because he is not creating even when krishna returns to fulfill the promise of the sadhus he will he will say to him not to worry because we are secure in our insecurity even if krishna returns to fulfill the promise to sadhus they will say to him not to worry because we are secure in our insecurity we have understood the cosmic law that everything moves in a synergistic harmony and nothing can be destroyed so we don't need protection from you what is the definition of a sadhu indeed one who is totally secure in his insecurity who is beyond life and death who have understood deathlessness who have understood experience that with it that which never dies is never born his awareness and understanding and light are his security 
one who is at ease amidst dangers and uncertainties of life is certainly a sadhu krishna needs no protection need not protect such a man of awareness and even if krishna says the person will say i need no protection from you all i need your blessings your blessings is my protection you need not stand with a uh, with a bow and arrow or a gun around me or create a barrage of the security guards around me you need not stand around me like a security guard this statement is very significant krishna says the day sadhu will no more be a sadhu instead of fake garb and all around are such persons that day i will have to come come for what to protect these people to protect these fake ones no to set the wheel of time that is losing its momentum once again to set the wheel of dharm that is losing its momentum to continue that its original rhythm and the inner insight is that day there will be the need to transform the and the inner insight is that day when the fakeness is increasing that day there is need to transform the wicked to destroy the wicked is simply a act that anyone can do for that krishna is not needed the law is is quite capable to destroy the wicked the law is quite capable to destroy the wicked all the punishments and law is there to destroy the wicked but not to destroy the wickedness the law the punishment can destroy the wicked but not the wickedness however your law and punishment cannot transform the wicked your prison your prisons are universities from where the wickedness the wicked graduates your prisons are the universities from where the wicked graduates the law lords lawyers are there to support and train the wicked otherwise there would have been no need for krishna to come and when the law of the nations are there the law cannot transform the wicked for transformation the birth and the birth of new man awakening of the awakened one is needed to transform the wicked as sadhu needs awakening can you imagine the state when even the wicked comes in the garb of a sadhu the statement is misunderstood your commentators and priests propagate that krishna comes to protect the sage and destroy the wicked the sage or the sadhu thinks that krishna is coming for our protection the wicked thinks krishna is coming to kill us because the wicked can only think in terms of killing the others or the other killing him however a deeper understanding reveals that nothing can be destroyed form is energy and energy cannot be destroyed only its form changes take for instance ice this is one form in that form water remains frozen and is totally unmoving the movement the moment it begins to melt it becomes fluid like and then begins to move or flow when water flows it can move far and water is put to heat at a certain temperature it begins to evaporate the it disappears and becomes the part of the entire cosmos water the fluid form disappears and becomes the part of the entire cosmos this is the subtlest form of water water is not destroyed in any state only its form changes energy changes the form and in the process it is not destroyed certainly the statement says for the destruction of the wicked however the insight is not what you understand by it or you are told indeed wickedness can only be transformed when its form changes from wickedness to righteousness it is needed when the righteousness remains 
It is needed when the righteousness remains only on the surface as appearance, like a woman who is acting that she is carrying a new life within, but she cannot deliver the new life. For something new to deliver, a change has to take place within. When righteousness is fake just as the appearance, only then a higher force of energy or the awakened one is needed to set the wheel of dharma once again in motion or increase its rotations per minute rpm. That is when something is moving, the way to measure its movement is known as RPM, rotations per minute. When the wheel of dharm is slowing down after 500 years, its RPM is going down. To increase its RPM, higher force is needed. A force is needed if you, you are an engineer, you will know it that whenever the RPM goes down, it needs to increase something, a higher force is needed. But your custodians of the religion and priests go on imagining erroneously sitting in their monasteries that whenever problems arise, Krishna will come. The sage feels contented that all those who are troubling us are wicked, such as the ordinary human understanding. In reality, for sage, there is no enemy. If there is an enemy for you, still that means you have not attained to sin too. You have not attained to the inner light. Everyone is friend. He understands the Upanishadic dictum, Isha Vasimidam Sarvam. Only divinity reigns supreme. God alone permeates through the entire creation. When the one troubling you and creating problems appear to you to be enemy, then there is no difference between you and him. You, can, you cannot trouble or create obstructions for the awakened ones. Awakening is the expression of righteousness. They go on thinking that Krishna promised to protect us and whenever we are in trouble, he will protect us. I have heard during the British rule, once there was a curfew in a particular area. A sannyasi was returning to his monastery late during the curfew hours as he lost the way. He had taken the vow of silence. Thus when he reached the curfew area, it was pitch dark. He was caught and quizzed. But because of his vow, he did not utter any word. And according to the law of curfew, if a person does not speak at the count of three, he is shot at point blank. He could not defend himself because of the silence and the authorities were not aware of his silence as a result of result he was shot. And at the last moment when he was dying, he spoke Swit Ketu you too. There is no fear, instead he welcomes to death. When awakening dawns, the quality of the subject, the duality of the subject and the object disappears. When awakening dawns, the duality of the subject and the object disappears. The subject and object are one. God killed God. And one who was killed and one who killed are both manifestation of God because Isha was Semidam. That consciousness permeates through everyone, the sinner and the saint. Ignorant, they miss the statement. The statement of Krishna comes as a satire for the ignorant sage. Whenever an awakened one like Krishna is really, really satires, it has a deeper meaning. Theirs is no ordinary satire. Indeed, this statement is a deep satire for the sage that a time will come when protection will be needed for the sage. Statements of Krishna, Buddha, statements of Krishna, Buddha, Christ and Mahabir are no ordinary statements. They are impregnated with eternal fire that requires awakening and understanding. To understand these statements, First, you have to plunge deep within your being and when the lamp is lit, only then your inner light 
only then in your inner light everything gets incandescent and shows the essence it is only when the inner lamp is lit then in your inner light everything gets incandescent and shows the essence paritranaay sadunam vinashaya cha dushkatam dharma sansthapnarthay sambhavam yuge yuge only this much on this particular sutra 